Hey, put that away. Hey, that's a deadly weapon. We're all terrified. So anyway, there's the car. It's over there. Looks just like an Indy car. It's practically ready to go. It's actually a champ car. Yeah, I know. People don't know what that is. There's the Omega car. I'm working on that. It's going to be sweet. <laughs> What's up, people? I am here today with Aiden, or Showboat. Say hi, Showboat. Hi. <laughs> anyway, we are working on his super cool indie car project with the Honda K Series. Now, Aiden's very intelligent uh, and a somewhat entertaining individual with great jokes. A lot of them are very dark. Do your parents know about all your dark jokes? I think so. Okay, well, if they don't, they do now. Uh, do you want to tell them what you're doing and why it's cool? Um, so we have been swapping a Honda K-Series motor into this Indy car. Here, come over here so I can see it while they're talking. Because people have the attention span of a goldfish. Okay, where are you? Um, so right here. So this Honda K-Series was never meant to be in here. Correct. have a Mercedes VA. Yes, it was, it was meant to go in a very boring commuter car. Anyway. So it isn't designed to be fully stressed like the... Uh, Mercedes VA is, so we have a big billet aluminum oil pan mm -hmm. to take the loads down low. We built this gray structure here that ties the forces up high and transmits the forces from the transaxle to the um, monocoque. Um, so we've got that figured out. We cut a hole in the under tray to clear the different shape of the bottom of the motor. Are we going to leave that hole? We can do something about it. We're going to fill that hole. When are we going to do that? I don't know. <laughs> Later. That's a future us problem. So anyway, the structure you're talking about here, this tubular structure, is kind of like roll bar chassis tubing here. And we had to give a lot of consideration to it because, if you guys notice or remember, the transaxle here, this upper casting where the shocks mount, as well as the suspension here in the front and the rear, this comes off. And that's important to be able to service what? Uh, the turbo charger. Yes! So... We would like to be able to service this car really well without actually having to split the whole thing in half here whoosh, at the monocoque or here at the transaxle. And is it fair to say that our engine is stressed, semi-stressed, or not stressed at all right now? Um, semi-stressed. Yes, it is semi-stressed. Like my life. Yeah, okay, anyway, moving on. Are you sure it's not fully it's stressed? It's a dad joke. It, it's not fully stressed? Yeah, I am fully stressed. So... He mentioned the big billet aluminum oil pan here. I think you guys remember that. So that's taking the loads and mounting from the monocoque here with the four pins to the transaxle adapter plate here. And then of course this, which we'll call a trunnion or an A-arm, very strong, triangulates in there. Now, if you notice the engine being partially stressed, do you want to explain to them how it's partially stressed? Um, so the engine is bolted down here and any sort of movement of that oil pan is also going to try and move the block. So the block does add some amount of stiffness to the um, assembly. That's right. So let me dive in here a little better. So the block is fully bolted here at where the bell housing would have been in the engine and the clutch in fact goes down in here. So it's bolted onto this thick billet aluminum adapter plate which goes to the transaxle. So here it's constrained in the rear and it's constrained on this full flat plane here. So the engine will help with any torsion but the engine effectively also triangulates uh, if you look from a high point here going through down to the pins here. So the engine creates a triangle here. Now what we did, which is interesting, which required a lot of dang thought, this top tube is removable. It has an interesting interlocking, I don't know if we call them fingers or blocks here, with these two Allen bolts that hold the blocks together. So the Allen bolts are not in stress from the forces going in the tube this way compression and tension, they just hold it in place. But if we remove these bolts, as well as the nuts here back on the toilet bowl, the transaxle, we can remove this tube, which allows us to remove the toilet bowl and service it, but the car won't just buckle and fold in half because you have this triangulation going to the upper part of the monocoque down here. So that keeps this whole thing from going upward, but what keeps the transaxle from falling forward is the engine, of course, triangulating it. So that's what we did to make this more serviceable, mm -hmm. which is a smart phrase for allows us to be much lazier. Yes. Doesn't allow us to be lazier in design, though. Yeah. Let's see some parts. 
Oh, is this braided copper for the... Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's mine. Hold on. I threw that in the box because I also am lazy and these came to my house because the mail here at the shop sucks. Okay, what's this? Um, it's an AN20 bung fitting. Say that again, what's it called? Um, it's an AN-20 bung fitting. Bung. I'm old, I watched Beavis and Butthead when I was a kid, when my parents weren't home. What's that? Um, it's a 45 degree. AN. Also, the name is Fragola, and it won't even get you canceled. I'm, I'm rocking the dad jokes today, dude. Yeah? Do you want to give any of them a dark joke? I can believe if it's too dark. You're afraid to give a dark joke. <laughs> Can't think of one. Um, so here's a 90 degree fitting. Okay, and what's that gonna be used for? Um, I believe this is the one that's gonna come off the oil filter mm, over there. Oil. Oh yes, the oil filter here. Um, and then... So one thing we're doing, you guys, is so we've got water radiator, oil cooler, big water radiator over on the other side, mm -hmm. which has been modified from the original Indy car. Um, when this thing had a stock block Chevy, which was not the best engine in the world for this. Let's not go into it. But it's got this really nifty oil pump remote mount that has this. You can stick a drill on it, spin it, and pre-prime it. So we're able to reuse a lot of this stuff, but now we have to plumb it for this little K-series. So that's why we are having to buy a lot of new fittings and such. This one's an adapter to make it go a little smaller. Um, so, you know, giving consideration, obviously if we were being super psycho aerospace, some things might change, but at the same time too, there's so many good things on here that we can use. It's kind of the rule of close enough, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We need to save money. Per perfection is the enemy of good enough. Isn't that the quote? Or? Oh yeah. A l I think it's a little better is the mortal enemy of, wait a minute. No, perfection is the mortal enemy of good enough. Good enough. Which means you'll never get anything done. Mm. Ah, okay. All right. We actually want to get this done. Yeah, we do. What's in here? That's because you want to drive it. Oh, well, yeah. Okay, what's in here? Oh, a plug. Oh, it's a plug. It's a plug. Wow, that's exciting. That is riveting YouTube. Oh, these are mine. Hold on. You, give, me, give me my stuff back. This is for the Omega Car Air Conditioner. Silly. Okay. Oh, there's your hose. You want to check the hose? It's all right. You need a pocket knife? Definitely. Don't cut yourself. Your mother would be mad at me. Jeez, you need to clean your knife. Why? I work. I work with my hands, okay? What do you think I am? A this, suburban this is nerd? Knife. Hey, put that away. Hey, that's a deadly weapon. We're all terrified. Oh, okay, well done. Yeah. Were you in the Boy Scouts? Yeah. Okay, that's why you're intelligent. Oh, there we go. Is that the right size? I think so. Okay, hot diggity. Like all right, let's uh, let's get rid of this trash. All right, so we got all that. So what are you gonna do in your car today? Um, start figuring out plumbing. Uh, we need lunch. Yeah. And then we'll figure something out. Wait, what are we doing to this thing? Um, we're gonna start fitting um lines on where they're gonna go. Start putting fittings and fit on where they go and figure out what we're how long lines need to be. Yeah, that's cool. What are you making? And lines. Okay, how you doing? You threading that on? Yeah. Okay. Did you cross thread it? Nope. Okay, go! You got that on backwards. Well done. You mean to hold this up in the air for you? Yeah, that would be nice. Okay, it might there you go. On you. Look at that. It's going to drip on me. That doesn't sound There was fun. a lot of oil in this one. Oh, this is the one you're reusing? Yeah. Okay. Do you feel confident about it working well? Mm-hmm. Okay. Carry on, you wayward son. Do you think we'll get a copyright infringement? Probably. Because my singing is that good. Sure. Uh-huh. So anyway, there's the car. It's over there. Looks just like an Indy car. It's practically ready to go. It's actually a champ car. Yeah, I know. People don't know what that is. So in the mid nineties. No, God, we don't need a history lesson. Go Wikipedia it. Can you believe that egos and costs of racing got out of control and they decided to split? Did that, did that sum it up? Pretty much. Okay. There's the Omega car. I'm working on that. It's gonna be sweet. I'm doing the interior and the climate kind of control stuff so I don't fry. But you guys will have to wait to see more about this. Currently, this is riveting YouTube, 
as you watch him assemble this AN fitting. What does AN stand for? Um, Army Navy. And why does it mean that? Because these fittings were initially designed and used by the Army and the Navy. I see. Designed to very high specifications to um, hold up in the environments and naval and aerospace environments. Um, and given to the lowest bidder. Yeah. Um, but now this Chinese stuff. Um, what? We're we not using Chinese stuff, are we? Well, it's not. None of this is actually certified up to AN specs. Oh, okay. Because you can't, like, it's really expensive. We're not using thing. Chinese parts, are we, though? I don't think so. That's but good. these Chinese AN fittings that you do get, we're literally paying for them to steal our technology. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. Why is he raining on my parade? This is what happens when you have smart people in here. Yeah, but, you know, greed and laziness from American business people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so these really, really nice fittings that I mm -hmm. don't think were made in China. That's good. Okay, is this one done? You're gonna flush it out so you don't get any goo in the oil system? Yeah. Flush away. There's my Formula B. Isn't it cool? I have to finish this sometime. I was working on the cockpit. Gotta make a seat. Okay. You're gonna just pick a side. Pick a side, pick a side. Well done. Get crazy, you can hose it down. Now look what you did. All right, so that's basically it, but Aiden's doing a really good job here. Uh, currently we're working with the Sarlacc pit, um, and these are the, the fittings and such here. There, of course, is where the oil has to go into the motor to pressurize it. Here's the pressure uh, stage of the dry sump oil pump, and then these two are scavenging. They suck out of these two, out of the pan, you can see right there and right there. So there's a lot of things we gotta do very tightly to make that work, um, but it's going well and it just takes time. But uh, it's a really neat project that we're doing over this year and next. Uh, next year, um, it'll be just kind of finishing up and getting Aiden ready for, you know, when he's ready to test it. So also looking forward to taking Aiden out in the racing carts this year to get him some skill and some hands-on learning with engineering and that's basically it guys so i know this isn't a high production quality video but i thought you'd enjoy you know just a quick update on what we've been doing it's been a tremendous amount of work uh but aiden's done a really excellent job especially um with regard to the engine mount plate this big hunk of billet see all this had to be hand sanded and shaped and so that's that's a lot of stuff that aiden was working on with a lot of care and uh a lot of good work, see? Because this is where, you know, uh, tubes and such have to fit in there and everything has to work. So it's been a really fun effort together. And I think this is just a really great engineering and learning project that should help him get into any engineering school he wants in the country. What do you think? Just don't go to a university that's super woke. Try to find one where you actually learn something useful. Wait, where would that be? I'm not sure. I, th I was hoping you would know. I don't know. Ugh, we'll have to work on that. All right, you guys. We will see you next time. I don't know what we'll have done on this here car, but uh, hopefully you guys think it's cool and will enjoy following along with Aiden's journey. I've got some stuff coming up. Uh, of course, the Omega car here. I'm getting it ready to do the miles per gallon testing and acceleration testing. And I want to have my Formula B done this year. Viper's ready to track tests. And then... Uh, First, got some other projects and uh, looking forward to Genius Garage students. Um, this is the last week ability to apply. Friday at five o'clock is when it's due. If you haven't applied to Genius Garage but want to this year, you'll have to go back in my videos a couple for the application video and figure it out. You're smart. See you guys next time.